but you you mentioned managed access multiple times. So maybe if you can just explain what that means and what why is there an opportunity in this so-called managed access, and maybe uh, compare it to what we the traditional access would be. I know, and I apologize because th- this conversation about real world evidence it is it's not small because it impacts so many different things, right? And one of the things that it does impact, or or that w- the, the, it is managed access agreements, and basically managed a- the way we do funding right now is we say, okay, the drug is approved, and this is what we're going to pay for it, and you've got it, and we're we're approving it based on the evidence that we saw in clinical trials. Managed access agreements work differently in that they say, okay, we didn't see the kind of evidence that we thought that we needed to see to make a final recommendation, but we think it has potential. So we are going to say, yes, you can uh, give this drug to more patients outside of the clinical trial, um, or you can give patients out, yeah, uh, access to patients outside the clinical trial, but we're going to ask that you. Um, collect and gather more information from all of these patients. And based on that information, we will decide, we will make a final recommendation somewhere down the road, a prearranged time down the road, um, to as to who actually benefits from that drug and how much we're willing to pay for it. So we're managing access to the drug based on additional evidence that is provided after the clinical trial is completed. 